So next we're going to drill the hole in the top of our earring. Now, this hole, what we're going to do is we're going to solder a rivet onto this post. Then we're gonna put that rivet through this hole and we're gonna rivet this top on in such a way that it will have movement. If you do not want to do that, or if you feel like maybe your skill level is not that advanced, then you can stop here and simply put an earring wire in that. It'll be beautiful the same. But let me... Beautiful the same. But let me encourage you to go ahead and at least try this step. Um, if it doesn't work for you or if you get frustrated with it, uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained, you can still put an earring wire uh, in the top of that. So I'm just going to place my drill bit on. And then I have my hole. Hi, I wanted to show you these earrings with the ear wires on them. These are the ones with the gold inset into the two argentium silver wires that we fused on. Now, if you wanted to stop there, you could certainly stop there, but we're getting ready to do the next phase where we will apply the little tops. We will solder a rivet on the back. We will also solder a post on the back. So then they'll go right like that and you'll have a post earring. But I wanted to show you this phase. Now, let me encourage you to go ahead and try the next phase. If it doesn't work for you or if, if you don't really like it, go ahead and do it because you can always clip that rivet and then reinsert the earring wires. And if you wanna know how to do an earring wire, I have a video in the info for all section on how to do an earring wire. So, there those are, they're absolutely beautiful. I love that gold running up between those two wires. And um, now this is kind of a medium shine. It's not a high shine, but I didn't leave it really dark either. And you guys can decide how you want to do that. Let me see if I can get just a little bit closer. See a better view. I do have, I did take photos and I'm sure you've seen those photos. Alrighty, let's get on with it. Now, um, the holes that we have been drilling for our wire to go through are not the same hole that we are going to drill for our earring wire. Um, if we are only going to put an earring wire in there, then that drill bit would be perfect, but we're going to rivet the top part of our earring on, and it's very important when you're drilling a hole for a rivet that you get the drill hole as close as possible to the wire gauge that you're going to insert. You don't want any play at all. In fact, you really want to have to force that rivet just a little bit into that hole. So if you will look under the info for all, under the printables, you will find a wire and drill bit gauge chart. This is something you can print out and keep. Um, we are going to be using the same 16 gauge wire that we fused onto the earring. So in order to drill the right size hole, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna look here on the chart, you're gonna go down, you're gonna find your wire gauge, and then you're gonna look here to find the number 
of the drill bit that you need to use. Now, interesting enough, the 16 gauge wire has two different drill bits. And it says one is large and one is small. So let me suggest that you err on the side of caution and use the small one, the 56. And if by some stretch of the imagination you cannot get your 16 gauge wire through there, then all you have to do is put your drill bit in, go in and out a few times, and it will put just enough play in it so that you will open it. So if you're going to rivet 16 gauge wire as we're going to do, then I, I suggest that you definitely need the 56 drill bit. So now I'm going to mark where I want my ear, the hole for the rivet, for the top part of my earring. Um, now, if we were going to use 14 gauge wire, the holes that we drilled uh, or the drill bit that we used would be perfectly fine. But I hated for you guys to have to go ahead and buy 14 gauge wire uh, if you did not need it. So um, usually you'll buy drill bits in an assortment or a pack. So I'm gonna let you guys make the call on this. If you wanna use 14 gauge wire for your rivet, you can use this drill bit that we drilled these holes with to drill the top hole. If you want to use the wire that we fused to the earring, you're going to need a number 56 drill bit. But I'm gonna let you guys make that decision whether or not you wanna buy a different wire or a different drill bit. Either way, now it is time to mark where we want that. We don't wanna put that too far down. If we put it too far down, it, it not only is it not going to look attractive, it's gonna really, uh, be out of balance and difficult to move. So you want plenty of room around your rivet though. You want, you want it centered nicely so that it's gonna be sturdy. I don't know if you can see that. I will definitely post A picture so you can see that better. But now it is time to drill that hole. Remember if you're new at this or a little uncertain, you can take your punch, push it down, make your divot to lock your drill bit into and you'll see here that it is locked in. And that 16 wire fits very nicely. I'm going to do this one now. fits nicely there. Okay, so now we're going to do two things. We are going to rivet, we're gonna solder, excuse me, our rivet, this portion of our earring. I'll take a picture so you can have a better vision. Then we are going to take 20 gauge wire because that's the size you need to use for your, uh, either it's an earring post or an ear wire, always 20 gauge. 
we're going to solder a piece of that on here for our post. So we're going to have two, two items that we are going to solder on here. And it's really easiest to solder them both at the same time. If you have them both set up and put your hard solder on there, then you heat them one time and uh, then you don't have to worry about the one of the solders coming undone while you're soldering the other one. So first of all, uh, I'm gonna bend this down so you can see better. Okay, so I have the earrings here. This is 14 gauge wire because I drilled this hole in this earring with the same drill bit that I drilled the holes to weave in, okay? checking to make sure that it will go in. And you see I'm having trouble working it in there. And uh, that's good. Sometimes I take my pliers because I get a firmer grip. But you will see that it does fit. And that's when you do a rivet, the number one reason for it to fail um, is because the wire isn't big enough for the hole. And then no matter how much you rivet the top and mushroom it over, then it's still gonna slip through the hole. So you want a really, really tight fit. Now we discussed if you didn't have any 14 gauge wire, you're gonna wanna drill your hole with a smaller drill bit. I'm gonna pull this chart back out. So for the 14 gauge wire, we used the number 52 drill bit. It's the same drill bit that we drilled the holes with. Now you'll notice here again on the 16s, there are two drill bits. If you're going to use the same wire that you fused on top of the earring, which is 16 gauge, go with the smaller 56 number 56 drill bit. Again, this is in the info for all printables, so be sure and print this out. It'll be a great tool for you to have on hand. Now on this one, I did use the smaller drill bit, and this is the 16 gauge wire. Now, it's a little looser than I like, but it, it does fit snug. It's not loosey-goosey, and it doesn't slop around. My guess, it is it, the drill bit was the 55 and not the 56. So, what we need to do, first of all, oh, I did want to mention, you can purchase from Rio Grande, which is uh, something I do quite frequently, pre-made Argentium Silver earring posts. They're just, they're just uh, easier. Now here's one and you will see, I'm hoping you can see, maybe not. It already has that little notch all the way around it and it's already smooth on top. It's already completely rounded over and it does have that little earring or that little notch for your back to catch on. If you don't buy these pre-made, then you have to round the top and you have to do your own little notch, okay? And we're, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But for future reference, um, you might wanna purchase these. I find that the cost is so uh, economical that it just makes sense to do that. Yeah. So, what I want you to do, oh, let's cut it 12 millimeter. <clears throat> now I buy, for my 20 gauge, I buy half hard. The reason I do that is when I'm making uh, earring wires, particularly, I don't have to worry that they're too soft. Though I can throw them in the tumbler once I'm done and um, 
it'll finish hardening them up just a little bit and uh, the half hard for the earring wires just seems to me that it's 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 the best choice so what we're going to do we can take our sharpie we can first of all I'm going to uh, just snip off remember when you're snipping wire hold your e finger over the end so it doesn't go flying okay and I'm going to hold this wire here and I'm putting it at I'm going to go ahead and do 13 since it's easier to take metal off than it is to add metal on that is a joke we would never add metal on to an earring post and I'm going to snip that right at that mark okay now I'm going to need four of these so I'm just going to lay that next to in next to the other one I'm going to snip me four Now we're going to cut our rivets. We want our rivet that gets soldered onto our uh, earring top to be very, very, very flat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and this little piece of wire that I've got, I'm going to file the end flat. I'm gonna put it in my bench pin, in my notch. <laughs> Make a couple of passes. Make sure it's good and flat. Okay. Now you're going to want to give yourself ample room on this rivet. So because I had this little scrap piece, I'm just going to cut this one in half. This is way more than we need. Okay, I have taken a Sharpie and I have marked on my earring backs where I want my post to go. So I'm going to take my first one and I'm going to lay it out here on the block. I'm going to use these two third hands to hold the posts. And I'm going to make sure that that I don't drop it. I'm going to make sure that the uh, end that I filed is down on the earring back. Now it's a little fiddly, but that's okay. We want to get it right. And this will get easier through time. Okay. Now in the second third hand, I'm going to get my earring wire or my post. Again, I'm gonna look for the flat end. Be sure and adjust your third hands um, correctly. Once you do that, it's going to be a lot easier. I had to stop there and re-articulate it. Um, I really like these third hands because you can do that. They're, they articulate in so many different directions that uh, I've never had trouble getting it in the position that I want it.
If you have trouble with it bouncing back up after you get it positioned, if you'll pull your wire down, and let it push against the earring back. Okay. You wanna double check everything. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna put two little bits of hard solder And you want to rest them right up against your post and your earring. Right there at the bottom where they meet. And you want to wick away with a paper towel any excess solder. And I just take a little paper towel and twist it and then just barely touch it. If you need to, you can always readjust your solder with that wick end. Okay, I'm ready to go. So now I'm going to Light my torch. Now, the third hands will act as a heat sink, but that's okay because we don't want the wires to get too hot too quick. Now, I could have wicked away a little bit more flux because it bubbled up and moved my solder. So I'm just going to reposition it with my tweezers. Okay. The third hands that act as a heat sink, heat sink will keep the uh, wires from melting too quickly. So as soon as you see the solder start to flow, We will let that cool and then we'll do the next one. I wanted to show you a trick. I found this little silicon pincher. It's uh, for the kitchen. I found it um, in some kitchen uh, store or department. Um, it's small and I love it because these third hands are very, very hot. So I keep this right here. And so when I want to pinch that hot third hand, I have my little silicon pincher thing right here. So that's a good thing when you're out and about that you might want to look for. It will save your hands. Okay, now it's time to put our earring toppers onto our earrings. I have taken some little pieces of white cardstock, doesn't matter what it is, but it's real thin. We don't need anything thick at all. Uh, and I did punch holes, one for each, but if you don't have a hole punch, just take a sharp object and make a hole uh, large enough that it will fit over the rivet. This will give us a, just the slightest bit of play between the earring and the back so that once we're done, we can have just a little bit of room for movement. Now, it is a possibility 
that through all of the soldering and manipulation, um, your rip, your your rivet end has gotten just the slight bit misshapen. If it will not go through the hole, you can file around it just a little bit, just to make sure that it goes through. Now, I find that it's easier to take my pliers and hold the rivet and then push it through the earring. Then just to continue to wiggle it back and forth. And then pull the rivet or push the earring all the way down. There we go. So now we have the earring back on the earring. Okay, now that we have our rivet through our hole, we are going to need to cut the post or the rivet. The rule of thumb is to cut one half the diameter of the rivet. I'm going to hold this earring down against the, the uh, steel block this is a rivet hammer. This is a Fretz rivet hammer. It's a 406. I use this for tons of stuff. I use this for texturing and all kinds of things. Uh, and it is listed in the tool section. Hammer straight down on that rivet. It may seem like at first you're not making any progress, but I promise you are. Then I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. You can hear when you're not getting good contact. You want to make sure that it is flared out enough that it will not come back through the hole. Okay, once we've done that, then we will tear a little paper off. It'll be stiff at first, but then you'll be able to move it back and forth a little bit and have some play. Once we patina them and polish them, they'll be exactly the same color, color as the earrings. But first, we have to finish our posts. All right, well, now we have our heads all riveted on there, and we've got enough play in them so that they're movable. 
Now we're going to work on our earring wires. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that they're straight. If you'll notice, this one has a little bit of a bow to it um, through all the things that we've done. It's just uh, bent a little bit. So take the full length of your pliers and just go around it and straighten it. Just, just press. If it is not perpendicular to the top of the earring, go all the way down and then just gently bend it so that it is. You want to look from all directions to make sure that it's coming out perpendicular and that it's straight. That gentle pushing with the pliers will also help to work harden it. Okay. Now, we want these about 10 millimeters long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my divider I'm gonna set it at 10 millimeters, actually about nine, I think was what I measured. So I've got nine millimeters here. Then I'm just going to come along here and just mark a little notch. I'll take my snips. Hold the end so it doesn't fly. And I have my earring post. Okay. So you'll want to do all of them that way. You could lay them down on the ruler and mark them with a Sharpie if that's easier for you. Okay. Now, another way to work hard in them is I just take the very top and just gently just pinch it and twist that wire just a little bit. That twisting will work hard in it. You wanna make sure you're doing it at the very end. That way it will twist all the way down the shank. Okay. Now, in order to make that little divot um, so your earring back will stop, if you will take a pair of round nose pliers and then just about probably two millimeters from the end, just slightly pinch and then twist back and forth and that will make a little groove. Okay. And then do that on all your earrings.
Now, the next step is we need to round that end. You can buy a little bitty handheld, uh, it's a cup burr. It has a little cup. And this one is just really good for 20 gauge wire. It just fits right on there and then you can round that in. Now, another thing you can do somewhere along the way, you'll probably want to buy you a set of cup burrs that will fit in your flex shaft or your Dremel. Um, but on a budget, this is a handy little thing to have. And you just want to make sure that that earring end has the very sharpest ends taken off. We're gonna throw it in the tumbler and once we do that, it will eat further burnish that down. So we're gonna take that to all the ends and I'm just twisting it back and forth and I'm moving it around a little bit as well. Double check that again. This one's a little bit crooked. And we have our post. Now I'm gonna go clean these up real good and we're gonna patina them. Put them in the tumbler and we've got two sets of earrings. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to wash our earrings. I'm going to hold the earring post between my fingers so that it doesn't get bent. And then I'm going to wash my earrings. I am going to wash the back, but I'm going to be very careful. Not run that post through the bristles, but I'm going to brush on each side. Now that we've done all four of our earrings, we're going to apply patina. Again, I'm using the Midas Black Max, and I'm going to apply it with a paintbrush. Now just like before, I'm going to give it a good scrubbing. And see if I need to apply a second one. That one looks pretty good. I don't think I need to apply any additional on it. And so does that one. Looks like they're all turning out really nice. This one needs a little extra, I think. Yep, that's very good. All right, 
Now we're going to go in there and we're going to brush back the new patina we've put on. Then we're going to polish them and throw them in the tumbler. So now we've got them out of the Black Max. I'm going to take my 4 aught steel wool and just very gently brush back the patina. You'll begin to see that gold start to pop back through and the silver of the wires. Such a beautiful contrast. Now, this is another design option that you can choose. These are beautiful, just like this, if you didn't want to brush back anymore. Or you could do like we did on these and brush one side back to a high shine. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and not brush too much back on the... the uh, textured side to kind of add a little more contrast. I'm going to add ear, ear wires, and I'm going to throw them in the tumbler, and then I'll show you what they look like. Okay, now we're going to buff back the patina. Again, you're going to support the earring with the earring post sticking through your fingers. Brush back as much patina as you want. We are going to go over there and polish them a bit with the polisher. But we do want to get the, the patina off the high spots. We have our little textured earring tops. And we want that texture to show. Now I would not have patinaed the earring base early or first, except that I wanted to put an earring wire on and show you what that looked like. So at this step, you would actually be patinaing and brushing back your entire earring. I want that gold to really, really shine. And then those silver wires next to it, I want those to really, really pop. All right. Now we're going to take these over and I am going to polish them. You can use whatever polishing method that you want. If you want to use the wheels or even if you want to just use papers, that's fine. They're not going to need a ton at this point, but uh, I do want to polish them and then we'll drop them in the tumbler.